At the time, Dr. Colin Murray Parks, quote, love might be the price we pay for love, struck a painful chord with me. I know firsthand that the carnage of grief can be deafening. I understand when I hear clients say they never want to lose anyone ever again. It's just too painful. But then I worry that they may limit their recovery and one of life's greatest experiences, love. Time. Truthfully, grieving may feel like we may never be the same again. And there is truth in this. Possibly, if we allow ourselves to grow through what we go through, we can be even better than we were before. However, as we are treading the deep waters of grief, it may require the willingness to surrender to our brain's deep desire to feel good again. Mind science reveals that emotional pain can also be a natural motivator. Cortisol, known as the brain's unhappy chemical, floods our system when we feel blue. Your brain identifies any trauma with a lack of safety, survival, and security. And cortisol signals the brain to spring into action, sourcing limitless ways to secure your survival. In short, one primal survival solution is to find a mate, or in modern days, to be willing to love again. And possibly if you are still hurting, this idea seem, seems inappropriate. So with a hand over my heart, I want you to consider that to love again is not unloving what is lost. Aristotle spoke of love as soul inhabiting, and centuries of poets and philosophers remind us in songs, poems, and literature that love is boundless, limitless, expansive, and never-ending. I think love is like the air we breathe, endless. I recall too that Carol King cautiously serenades us not to live a life without love. After all, where would we be without the richness of love? But when we hurt, there may be insufficient energy to notice that love exists all around us. As I researched and actively engaged in my recovery, I became acutely aware of the repeat repeated messaging that emotions are simply blocked energy. And what I found was that once this trapped energy was released, my body relaxed and my soul breathed a little deeper. I know now that this freed energy became a rocket fuel for my personal growth and possibility. But the facts are that many people never recover, and I bet you know of someone. Psychology warns us of becoming trapped in trauma as it can become our mindset and in a mere four months, chronicity begins, meaning our trauma could define us or may become embedded in our personality. So how do we feel good again? Neuroscience says the solution could be love. Feelings of love stimulate a happy potion of several neurochemicals to be produced in our brain. And these feel-good cocktails amplify themselves whenever we engage actions often associated with love. Here's a little bit of info about the three little neurochemical beauties of happiness and how we can ignite them within. Dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. Self-love and care can vitalize dopamine. This neuroche neurochemical is aroused when we are getting our needs met. Whether it is a child engaging with mom, doing something kind for yourself, or the primal brain's doing, initiating the behavior needed to find a mate, dopamine is responsible for the hunting high in the dating game. Social trust and connection become the recipe for oxytocin release. Friendship, childbirth, a nurturing yours, another's child or a pet, animate oxytocin. But let's talk about the benefits of touch. Holding the hand of someone you care about feels good, and repeated hand holding fosters more release of oxytocin while naturally strengthening trust. Trust generates feelings of being supported, further motivating the desire to bond. And when you are ready, 
know that oxytocin production skyrockets during sex, intensifying passion and orgasm. The three-legged stool is completed with serotonin. It naturally feels good to be desired and admired. In the end, the facts remain that our DNA is strongly embedded in the limbic brain, motivating us to move towards happiness. Love, social connection, and friendship all liberates happiness. And if our brain's chemistry assists us in finding love again, I say it's a good thing. So lean in. Stay well out there. XO, 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 Adele.